Welcome to another In Wheel Time podcast, a 30-minute mini version of the In Wheel Time car show that airs live every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central. Live from Studio A, inside the world-famous Sugar Shack in Texas, USA, it's the In Wheel Time car talk show. Coming up, we hope to talk to Richard Tomlin up at Pikes Peak if he can get cell service up there. We also have the upcoming events calendar, Mars Reviews, the new Chevy Tahoe. (laughs) Plus, you'll hear the stories making automotive news headlines. Howdy, along with Mike out of this world, Mars. He doesn't know how to remote start a vehicle. King Conrad (laughs) DeLong. We always need more Jeff Zekin. Wear a hat. Wear a hat. I'm Don, I'm Don Armstrong. Glad you could join us on this Saturday. We always give Mars such a hard time, and he really deserves it. But, Thank you um, very much. Uh-huh. But he, we got to blame somebody. I know. So we... And, and Suze can't be blamed. No, she can't. She has been knocked out on the con- cool concrete over there. It's I don't girl. blame her. Candace says, sorry, guys. She would have been an interesting interview. Yeah, that's what we thought, too, Candace. But some things you can't control, so we'll just mm-hmm. pick on Mars instead. There you go. She, she said she couldn't even show us the truck because it was locked up inside the shop. Now, wait oh. a minute. You isn't got the her, keys to the her, shop, Candace. Is, Don't give isn't me that. her last name Sneed <laughs> and Sneed Ford? You'd think that somebody give her a key. Yeah. Anyway. Maybe she doesn't want a key. Well, there's that. Want a key? Isn't that an island in uh, in Florida? No, it's this Hawaiian guy I know. That's Warnicky. 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 Mm-hmm. Here's a very interesting story. <laughs> Mr. Mars. Stellantis says, which is the owner of Dodge, Chrysler, Jeep, Plymouth, Ram. 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 Mm-hmm. I guess they don't. Yeah, Fiat. Fiat. I, I guess they, they don't have. Alfa Romeo and, and the, the toenail. And the toenail. Mm-hmm. You see them advertising that on TV now. The toenail. The, I saw the toenail on there, but they I don't ever it. say it. No. They well, don't ever say the toenail. They're embarrassed. Are they? Yeah. Why I mean, it's kind of like a car, black toenail you, with the 442 in yellow written on yeah, the top of it. Call your car a toenail. What, I, I, what, I haven't seen it. Oh, yeah. It's been all over the place. You can take the uh, Alpha out of Italy, but you can't take the Italy out of Alpha. Yeah. Pretty creative. I, I thought pretty creative ad. So anyway, the parent company is called Stellantis. Mm-hmm. Stellantis says dealers in the States... Following California's emissions guidelines, right. can only get gasoline vehicles ordered by customers. Dealers in other states no longer are receiving any plug-in vehicles without a customer order. So they're tr- they're trying to please everybody. Hmm. Yeah, but Screw following that. California's leads, like you know, watching the toilet water swirl while you're inside of it, inside the toilet, in the in the swirl of the toilet. I see. Well, um, all I can think of is build the cars, let the state sort it out. Let them sort it out. Here are the cars. We sell cars. We'll sell them to anybody. If you want one, talk to your local dealer or your politician. Because yeah, they want to be so woke. Yeah. Stellantis dealer David Kelleher is Did so well for Bud Light, Bud taking uh, every plug-in hybrid Jeep Wrangler he can get from the factory these days. That's because the automaker is no longer allocating gasoline-only Wranglers to his dealership in Pennsylvania, one of 14 states following emissions guidelines set by California. Uh, although the rules don't require the automakers to sell a certain percentage of zero-emission vehicles until 2026, Idiots. Stellantis said it has stopped shipping internal combustion models to dealerships in those 14 states unless customers have ordered them. Meanwhile, dealers in non-carb states can no longer get the Wrangle, Wrangler 4xE, which is the uh, hybrid, mm-hmm. and other plug-ins without a customer order. About 36%... So you're pers- on both sides of it. About 36% of the U.S. population lives in the 14 carb states, according to the 2023 wow. Census Bureau. Uh, four additional states are adopting the California standards for future models. Dealers in the carb states worry that they'll be at a disadvantage if consumers start crossing state lines to buy gasoline vehicles from another store's inventory you know rather to. than wait for a factory order. Yeah, they could do that. Some, some are working to trade for gasoline vehicles with stores in adjacent states. Heck, consumers <laughs> will drive five miles to get gas in a different state. Well, hell, we drove cheaper. to a different state to get Coors beer. Why not? Back in the day. Yeah. Okay. Because they didn't sell it in Texas. Just saying. 
You didn't drink Pearl? Ugh. Or Lone Star? Never, Pearl. ever, ever. Pearl make you smart. Yeah, and you do know that back when the Astrodome was open, I think that it was either Pearl or Lone Star that they sold. They didn't sell the other beers. Probably Lone Star. Ugh. I don't remember back then. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> I don't like beer anyway, and that just does not do it for me at all. Anyway. Mm -mm. Oh, we got Richard. We do? Yeah, I think so. Oh, he's walking somewhere. Let's get him on right now. Richard Tomlin. Are you there? Good morning, guys. How are you? Well, we're doing fine. Where are you I walking? Where are you walking to? Uh, just walking down from the car, chasing more uh, demons and dealing with altitude sickness for some of the crew and altitude sickness for the car. So always a challenge, right? So always you're at Pike's Peak. When when does the event get going? Tomorrow morning. So we uh, we are right now about two hours from staging cars. So we stage our cars the day before. Um, we'll park our cars overnight, and then we'll start about midnight making our way up the mountain as far as teams and crews to get ready for tomorrow's race. First car will leave the starting line at 8.01. Yeah, I heard they open the gates to spectators at 1 o'clock in the morning this morning, or tomorrow morning, well, for them to I'll drive start. up the hill to find a place to park. What's interesting is as a, and I, I'm going to use the word as a fan, as a spectator, or even as an American or from a foreign land, the only day of the year you can camp out on Pikes Peak overnight is tonight, once a year. And I think it's like 250 passes they sell, and you're allowed to camp on Pikes Peak overnight this evening, so you don't have to be up there at 1 a.m. to make your way up the mountain. Um, you're able just to show up, go camp out overnight, get up out of bed, and uh, go to a race. So a pretty special opportunity there. So do they have kind of designated parking areas for people? How do you know, how do you park a car on a racetrack? Right. There's a whole lot of designated parking areas. There is a assigned spot, so to speak. Like the easiest one for people to talk about is Devil's Playground, which is up at the top. Um, that's the best viewing area of the track. You can see it from further you can see more of the track from that position. So it's pretty good. Um, but yeah, you've got assigned areas, Glen Cove. Ski grounds, uh, trying to remember them all. There's picnic grounds. So they've got plenty of parking for that as well. We were talking about television coverage, and, and somebody said, oh, there isn't any. I said, there's got to be television coverage. Uh, I guess you can fly a helicopter up there. I, I wouldn't know, but certainly there's television coverage somewhere live tomorrow. There is the coverage live on the Mobile One app, or Mobile One app and then Mobile One YouTube. Uh, we'll have live coverage of the event streaming from start to finish. Um, Tanner Faust commentating. Uh, Hayward Wagner, SCCA, will be commentating. Tommy Bobila, he actually uh, crashed that Camaro earlier this or uh, last week, I guess. Crashed a 68 Camaro uh, from Dallas, Texas. So he'll be doing commentary instead of racing this year. Uh, but, yeah, it'll be from basically 8 o'clock until about 11.30 or 1. We've got 67 cars to make it up the mountain. Uh, we've got the Huna Pegasus, uh, which will be making a, we'll call it a parade lap um, at the end. So Kim Block's daughter will be driving the car from bottom to top. Uh, Kim Bl Block's wife, Lucy, is running a Alpha Sierra cart. Um, so imagine like a super, super small Class 10 buggy uh, with electric motors in it. So she'll be up there as well. So it's been a great week testing with the Blocks and uh, getting to know them a little bit better as well. Yeah, how do you Very avoid cool. how do you avoid uh, altitude sickness with a car? We drive an electric car. I saw there was a guy with a <laughs> yes, Tesla yes. Plaid is uh, listed on the uh, the entry list. Yeah, so so that's Randy Post, and uh, it's a group called Underground Performance out of Arizona. What I will tell you about them is uh, the car's quick. They made fast fifteen again this year, um, but it's a funny story. They've got to invest in a trailer because they showed up with a trailer that you would normally use to put a bulldozer on. So they've got like 25 <laughs> feet of ramps to get this car off, and it takes about 45 minutes to an hour to unload it and load it every time. Oh, it man. is un I, I don't understand it. I like rent a trailer from U-Haul, you'd be a lot happier. So it's uh, sure. it's fun stuff up here. Everybody has their challenges. Um, yeah, cars with altitude are crazy. We had our car tuned there in Houston by Alex at Pitts Performance. You guys know him well. Does a lot of the Dodge, the Hemi, um, new C8 stuff. And car made 575 wheel. We were super happy with it. Everything was great. We come up here and it's uh, burping and belching and just not happy. And 
after spending two days with some local guys, we found a lot of small changes that made huge differences because of the altitude that we're at. And uh, there's always something to learn in cars, always. What is the altitude down at the base of the mountain? Well, where we start, we start in, uh, it's going to be 10 miles where we start, 9 mile. Um, but we start at about 8,000 feet. So I'm going to say it's like 70, 7,600, 7,800 is where we start. And then we race to the 14. So, oh, my God. So you, basically you start halfway up the mountain. Yeah. So it's a designated spot. It's been the same spot for years, and that's what allows a lot of the parking down below and a place to store the trailers. I got um, you. It's just getting everybody in there for one time. And you think back to when we were still running bikes up here, you're talking at that time there was 100 cars running and almost 50 bikes. Um, so now you start talking about 150 trucks, trailers, and then you pack in all the fans as well. Parking is an absolute premium up here, but it's a spectacle you won't see anywhere else in the world. And you said that the racing starts at 8 o'clock. Is that 8 o'clock Mountain Time or 8 o'clock Houston Time? 8, 8 o'clock Mountain Time, so it'll be 9 o'clock for you guys. Yeah. So are you done with your inspection part of it? Because that's part of the reason you're up there is one of the I have one more inspectors. car to inspect. Um, some guys from Sweden, um, they got in super late, missed some practices, missed some tech opportunities, and uh, we got most of it done last night at FanFest, but I'll meet with them again this morning, give the final blessing. That'll be the last car that's teched, and uh, we will be ready and set to go. Did they bring a Saab? No, uh, a Volkswagen um, with some crazy motor that only nine of them were ever made in the world, but four-cylinder Volkswagen that makes 750 at the wheels here in Colorado. What is the fastest car, in your estimation, that's there today? Um, it's probably going to be one of two, which is at the top, which is Robin Shute. Um, he qualified number one again, and he put a beating on the Ford uh, van, the Supervan 4.2. Um, the lower section, I'm going to say he ran a three minute, 25 second qualify. The Ford van was a 343. What is he um, driving? So between first and second. And what kind of car is that? It's called a Wolf chassis. Um, looks like a older prototype style car oh. and runs a little Honda K24 D strokes down to a 1.8 liter and a couple of big turbos feeding it. Jeez. And and the turbos have less; they're less prone to altitude sickness because you can force more air into the engine. Correct. Correct. And one of the things that I've learned in the last couple of years is the big problem they have now is as you get to the top, because you're trying to compensate for the air, you start increasing RPMs and are over revving the turbos, uh, which of course causes little pieces of metal to go places you little, don't want little, it to go. A little bit, just a little bit. So there's some challenges with that, but. Um, there are people much smarter than us that are calculating those numbers and figuring that stuff out. But uh, last year, specifically, we had three turbos that I know of that failed on the pass up the mountain. And it's what they call overspeed. Oops. Yeah. yeah. It happens. I mean, it happens. So, yeah. Richard, when, so. The, when the event starts tomorrow at 9 or at 8 local, wh what are you doing as part of your safety stuff? So tomorrow, I will actually be at the top of the mountain. It'll be the first time I've been at the top of the mountain for the finish. And uh, I will be taking care of any protests that happen, um, any conflicts between members and class. Um, there is a prize purse for this race, so there is a lot at stake. Um, also, sponsorship dollars for where people finish. So tempers can get a little hot, and uh, I'll be up there to administer and enforce the rules and make sure everybody's playing by the same rule set. You're the, you're the enforcer, huh? Yeah, tomorrow I get to be that guy. The referee, um, you're the umpire. Okay. I mean, He's the umpire. Yeah, I got, I got broad shoulders. We'll be fine. Well, I saw that the uh, Broadmoor was involved in the um, uh, in the sponsorship of the program. Do you guys are you getting housed at the Broadmoor? No, that'd be really nice. That place is amazing. Isn't uh, it? Bike Speak the Race was actually started by the Broadmoor Hotel. That was part of their uh, traveling and bringing people to Colorado Springs. So they've been a part of it for 101 years. I wonder if they have like a little museum at the Broadmoor because I, you know, for me, I always remember some of the Cadillac Vista roof cars they had at the That's Broadmoor. <laughs> Pretty cool looking cars. They do have a gift yeah, shop. Yeah, they have a they have a very cool museum over there. And then you've also got the Pike Speak Museum here in town that cycles cars out. They have about six to seven cars on display at a time. And they cycle cars in and out about every three to four months. So there's a lot, lot to see around here about Pike Speak, the race specifically. Um, and it's a hell of a vacation spot. There's all kinds of things to do here. So how's your car going to do during the event? Um, we're pretty excited, actually. So uh, even though we had all the hurdles jumping over, 
Um, you guys understand the timing, but he ran a 425 qualify yesterday. On his run prior to that, he'd run a 450. So he had a 25 second uptick. Um, and it's just getting him time, seat time in the car. He's from Romania. Um, he's been over here about two weeks, but it's limited time you can get in his car to get it out on track. And uh, we even went to a local racetrack to give him some more time. And the more time he gets in the car, the faster he gets. The car has the capabilities. We're trying to get the driver up to speed at this point. Very, Very good. cool. No we pressure. should be. We, we qualified 27th out of 70 cars. We expect to be in the top 20. And, and, and you talk about four minutes and 20 seconds to get up the mountain because I'm kind of an older mindset on this. I remember way back, probably back in the 80s, when they finally broke the 10-minute barrier when it was still – a lot of it was still uh, dirt, and how that was, you know, everybody talked about, oh, that's on, they'll never do that, they'll never do that. And then they broke the nine minute barrier. Now you're talking four and a half minutes up the mountain. That's well, the 7,000 feet. Four and a half, yeah, the four and a half minute, Conrad, is just the lower section, the lower third. Okay. Um, the record time overall right now is seven minutes, 57 seconds held that's, by Romain Dumas in an electric Volkswagen that was built for Pikes Peak. That's um, insane. We, we expect the record to drop this year because of the weather conditions we're looking at. Obviously, you can see out here, it's really beautiful right now. There's Pikes Peak in the background. You may be able to see the snow cap there. Um, but Romain, uh, sorry, Robin Shute is on pace to break that 757 barrier. And it's great because Robin is still a very small team. He's, you can't call him a one-man show. I think he's got six people on his team. But to come in and compete with a company like Ford that has spent millions of dollars on this super van to be here, um, flowing people halfway around the world to come over and win an event, and for Robin to be able to still be in front uh, speaks volumes to, you know, the heart that people have to get in there and work and turn a wrench and make things faster. When are you coming back to work in reality here in hot Houston? Um, well, depending on where we finish, if we end up trophying uh, tomorrow, which is entirely possible, we qualify third or we qualified fourth in class. If we finish third in class, that's a pay position. We'll get a big trophy to bring home, and we'll stick around Monday to pick all that up. Cool. Otherwise, we'll go to bed as soon as we get off the mountain, jump up Monday morning, and make the 16-hour trek. Good. Well, um, I want to bring the Corvette to you so you can uh, work on its uh, power <laughs> degradation problem. Absolutely. All right. Well, we we'll... Well, I'll talk to you probably later next week. Well, he'll have a lot of experience because that's what he's having problems with with altitude sickness right now. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Richard, it's great, great to talk to you, and the best of luck to you and the team. We'll be following you. Appreciate it. Tune in, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Richard Tomlin, Apex Auto Works yeah, down I'm, in Alvin. I'm going to the uh, YouTube. I'll, I'll, I'll watch it. Will Absolutely. You? Yeah, it's good. All right, time now for the events calendar. Conrad has that. So, um, Tomorrow is the Lone Star Drift Academy, round three at the Houston Police Academy. Uh, also, um, uh, on the 25th is Houston Cars and Coffee at Little Woodrow's. On July 15th is the Texas Road to Revolution, departing from the Black Bear Diner on uh, 19, or 9510 FM 1960 Bypass in Humble, Texas. Back to you, Don. Thank you very much there, cool. Conrad. Okay, time now for this hour's car review. And Mr. Mars has <laughs> torn up and ruined a Chevy Tahoe in his test drive. <laughs> Let me tell you, not only a Chevy Tahoe, but a 2023 Chevrolet Tahoe RST four-wheel drive. This is the bright red one that is gorgeous. And let me just tell you up front, if you ever get a chance to pay that four ninety five for that uh, custom red tint paint, That'll be the best custom paint you're going to ever get in your life. How is it that you get video and all I get is still photography on my car reviews? How is that? He does the loading. He loads it. I know the editor. Yeah, (laughs) you're it. I get get hosed. Go ahead and start your interview. Yeah, start your interview. So the Chevrolet Tahoe is uh, one of the best leading selling full-size SUVs that's out there on the market. There's a lot of them. This one comes at six different trim levels, starting with the LS as the base and the RST model is actually about mid-trim level between the LS and the High Country. So it is a full-size SUV. This particular one came equipped with second-row bucket seats, so it's a seven-passenger vehicle. Six-passenger, my bad, excuse me, because I tried to get in the back seat. And the changes from last year, uh, the RST model, it's got a few trim-level changes and stuff. But you're going to find the black grille up front. got the black gloss black wheels. 
got some badging on it. It's got a, uh, it, the one we had had the optional radiant red tint coat. And again, that is going to be the best $495 custom paint job you will ever, ever get a chance to get. You got to find LED lighting all the way around the headlamps, tail lights, the daytime running lamps, got, uh, the power folding heated outside mirrors, power lift gate, the, uh, had the upgraded package, the optional it's, I thought it was kind of neat because the roof rack, the roof side rails, it's an option delete. You can take them off and it just makes all the difference in the way the vehicle looks. Roll on the 20 inch gloss black wheels, which just gives it this really bad donkey look whenever it's going down the road. It just, I love the way it looks and the way it sets because the uh, suspension on it, they use a lot of the components off of the pursuit package, the same package that the highway patrol gets here in the state of Texas. The PPV. It's on this vehicle. So it sets just a hair lower. It's got bigger springs, bigger shocks. It's got everything that black and white's got on it. Do they offer steel wheels with the dog dish hubcaps? Uh, cool. Probably not, just but I'll bet PPV. you can find I somebody I to swap got, with. Yeah, I just got to <laughs> say, that's what I'd want. So inside on this one, unlike I think the uh, PPV package has, we had the leather interior. So we had the bucket seats in the first and second row. The front row is heated. Third row is the 6040 bench folding. It's power folding, by the way. So that makes it really nice. The, um, we had the 10.2 inch touchscreen in the dash where we found the Chevrolet entertainment. I mean, we also had the Chevrolet entertainment system to go with it, which means there's two screens on the back of the front passenger seat, 12 inch screens that, uh, the rear passengers can use for their video content and, uh, Apple Android, everything hooks up on this thing technology wise. And we had the nine speaker Bose audio system in it. So. You could fill it up really good. Now, to make all this work, I mean, it's an RST, so you got to have a 6.2 liter V8. Now, because we had the uh, RST package here with the performance upgrade, the, the dealer actually installed a performance intake and a cat, cat back exhaust system on this vehicle, which bumped up the horsepower by 13 to 433 horsepower. And the torque by seven pounds per square foot. So it's at 467. Now, this has got it rated at zero to 60, according to Chevrolet, 5.78 seconds. Top speed, 124 miles an hour. Now, this vehicle. So did you, did you get there, Mars? About the top speed. I'm the, just the making. Chevy Tahoe, a top speed of a Chevy Tahoe. It's important to the police. It's, yes, right. It is. So. This vehicle, it will not tow as much as a as you can get a Tahoe to load uh, and tow because of the suspension and stuff on it. So this is rated at 7,000 pounds to tow, which is more than ample. Now, the EPA says you should be looking for 14 in the city, Highway 18, and combined 16. Now, I did make a point because of the time I had it. I didn't get to drive much on the highway, but I did make a point of going out on the highway, and according to the computer, I, at 75 miles an hour, the speed limit at the time, you could get 15 miles to the gallon out of it on the highway. However, I drove at 135 miles around town other than that little jaunt on the highway. So I only got 12.76 oh. during the time Oopsie I drove. Daisy. Oh my God, why doesn't that surprise Oopsie me? Oopsie daisy. Six so, which it really didn't bother me because I had all the performance aspects, the, the police per pursuit suspension, like I said, the springs, lower ride height, bigger braking. Now, that performance package, I will say, added on top of the RST is an $8,500 option wow. on top of the RST package of the base trim. So, so a base trim will run you about 55, I mean, excuse me, 65300 Now, listening. the base model of the RST is 70415 mm. However, because we had the performance package on top of that, you're looking at 81305 as an MSRP. What is the base price of a Tahoe? A standard white what I found rubber was floor mats. 53? Mm. I don't 65, think floor mats. What? Well, that's what I found. That's what I wrote down as the base trim for the LS model. Mike, what does RST stand for? It stands for really strong trucking. Truck. Yeah, that's right. I don't know. Really strong trucking. Yeah. If you're looking for something to compare this to, which was a little difficult because of the, 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 the luxury component, the performance package, but what I ended up finding was the Mercedes-Benz GLS, you can get comparable horsepower and things, full-size SUV, 84944. The Toyota, I mean, the Ford Expedition... <laughs> 
Ford Expedition has a stealth package, all-wheel drive, that I found. I did not ever hear of it before. It's at 81,870. Again, comparable horsepower. Dodge Durango SRT 392. Uh, it runs out at 81,195. Not the Hellcat, but the 392. So it puts, those three are kind of comparable. And the Full Hellcat's size more SUV money. Perform- oh, yeah. Yeah, it bumps it up more, even more money. So when you look at the full-size SUV performances out there, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. there's several of them, but I'd be hard-pressed to find one that you're not going to like better than this Tahoe. It's According to Edmunds, uh, the 2024 Chevy ha- uh, Tahoe is estimated to start around 55000 I said 53 so it's yeah, close. Okay. <laughs> all right. But Kidoki. you can get it all the way up to 84 well, that's with or this pattern. No, 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 no. This is three quarters of the way up the trim level tree. There's still three different more trim levels yeah. to go up. So if you're lucky, you can get a hundred thousand dollar Tahoe. Yeah. And but what's uh, and what's the difference between a Tahoe and a suburban? Length. Uh, I think it's eleven inches in length. Mm-hmm. All so, all behind the third row seat. Mm-hmm. I see. Okay. Storage behind the third row seat. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. Yep. You know, I see in the preview screen. You see him, <laughs> Mr. California, yeah, Mr. GQ, mm-hmm. Mr. Jack Nerad, and he's going to be joining us here at the bottom of the Can't hour. Can't wait! Jack is a cool guy. I know he is, and uh, we're going to find out about California politics from him. No, oh, oh, boy. no. Conrad, turn Conrad's <laughs> microphone off. <laughs> the Inwheel Time Car Talk Show is available twenty four seven through the iHeart Radio app. Just look for Inwheel Time Car Talk. We also have video stream on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and InWheelTime.com. And 30-minute podcasts are at your fingertips on over a dozen of the most popular podcast outlets. The InWheel Time Car Talk Show continues right after this quick break. Everyone at the Tailpipes and Tacos cruise in at the Loopy Tortilla Tex-Mex in Katy. Thank you for participating in the best cruise in around and look forward to seeing you again. You'll hear about the next cruise in date right here on InWheel Time. Next time you're in the West Houston Energy Corridor area, be sure and stop in at the original Loopy Tortilla Tex-Mex at I-10 and Highway 6 or the KD location on the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard. When passing through Beaumont or College Station, stop in and have Loopy's award-winning beef fajitas and frozen margaritas. There's always a celebration at Loopy Tortilla. Loopy Tortilla founder Stan Holt and his wife Sheila are winning racers on the NHRA drag racing circuit and have a collection of hot rods and classics that everyone appreciates. Look for them at the next Tailpipes and Tacos Cruise In. The date will be announced soon and will once again be held at the Loopy Tortilla Tex-Mex on 99 and Kingsland Boulevard, just south of I-10 and Katy. We'll give you all the details right here on the In Wheel Time Car Talk show and online donations benefit god's garage we'll see you then you own a car you love well, why not let gulf coast auto shield protect it houstonian john gray invites you to his state-of-the-art facility to introduce you to his specialist team of auto enthusiasts we promise you'll be impressed whether you're looking to massage your original paint to a like new appearance apply a ceramic coating install a paint protection film Nano ceramic window tent or new windshield protection called ExoShield, Gulf Coast Auto Shield is where Houston's car people go. Curbed your wheels? Instead of buying new, why not have them repaired? How about a professionally installed radar detector? Gulf Coast Auto Shield does that too. Get a peek inside the shop and look at the services offered by getting online and heading to GCAutoShield.com. Better yet, stop by their facility at 11275 South Sam Houston Tollway, just south of the Southwest Freeway, and get a personal tour. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is your place to go for all things exterior. Call them today, 832-930-5655 or GCAutoShield.com. The award-winning In Wheel Time Car Talk Show is available on the most popular podcast channels out there in 30-minute episodes. We realize our three-hour live show can be difficult to catch in its entirety, so now you can listen every day to a convenient, fresh 30-minute episode. Check us out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Audible, along with a dozen more. In Wheel Time has the most informative automotive guest interviews and new car reviews, along with popular features including Conrad's Car Clinic and This Week in Auto History, along with automotive news headlines. Our live broadcast airs every Saturday, 8 to 11 Central, on InWheelTime.com, the iHeart app, and on YouTube. Be sure to say hello when we're broadcasting from the Tailpipes and Tacos Cruise In, Autorama, and the Houston Auto Show, among others. Now, it's easier than ever to hear about all things automotive all week long. You're invited to join fellow car enthusiasts in becoming part of the ever-growing In Wheel Time Car Talk family. Don't forget those 30-minute podcast episodes on your favorite podcast channel. 
That's it for this podcast episode of the In Wheel Time Car Show. I'm Don Armstrong, inviting you to join us for our live show every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and our InWheelTime.com website. Podcasts are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeart Podcast, Podcast Addict, TuneIn, Pandora, and Amazon Music. Keep listening, and we'll see you soon.